What is the most amount of people that you have pissed off at once? How did you do it? Oh, I got this one. I work for city government. Part of my job was to set up robocalls to let people know about the date and time of events that were going on in the city at the time. And by was, I mean I still have the job, but don't do the robocalls anymore. Consider this foreshadowing. I don't remember what the particular event I'm about to describe was, maybe the Christmas parade? Anyway, I recorded the robocall, which I'd done several times before and always had a lot of people compliment me on it. Apparently I have a good voice. But this time I made a little mistake. The call was supposed to go out at 5.30pm. You probably see where this is going. The next day we had over 100 calls of people complaining of being woken at 5.30am by their ringing phone and my message. So I pissed off a city of 75,000 people all at one time, and I wasn't even there when I did it. Obligatory. My friend and I created a website in 2000 called Fantasy Death Row. The idea was that you put together a team from the list of real inmates scheduled to die in the next 3 months, and got points if they received a stay or clemency. It was actually a very nimble satire, I don't mind saying, which was missed by most everyone. So, after a while we blew up getting a million hits in a couple of days. Just about all of them pissed off. Texas was cheesed that we were giving points for people living instead of four when they got put down. The media got to talk down disappointedly to us on cable news and in op-eds for one hot minute. But Scandinavia went at the shit. Abash it. It just said something off in those pleasant people and for months we were getting the most polite hate mail and measured death threats. Of course anger is kind of the point of a satire, but Danish anger is a clammy and floppish thing and I don't miss it. I pissed off my sister-in-law's entire group of family and friends with my best man speech at my twin brother's wedding. I asked my sister-in-law beforehand what would be off limits in the speech, and she said, Oh, say whatever you want. I want to see you embarrass my mom. Okay. Challenge accepted. First off you should know that her entire family is very conservative and uptight. Very rigid Christians. Always proper but also very judgmental. I'm Christian too, but am very liberal and open-minded, like a polar opposite to most of them. Her mom especially is a pain in the ass, puts forth this aura of goodness and love, but is really passive-aggressive and self-righteous. Her dad is cool, though. Anyway, I get up to give my best man speech at the reception after a beautiful traditional ceremony. Pretty standard stuff to begin with, alluding to his inexperience in the bedroom and how he could ask me for advice. He and she were both virgins. Then I hit them with a Republican joke. Nothing too bad, something poking fun at Rush Limbaugh or whatever, but you could feel the mood shift a bit. You could almost hear her side of the room thinking, oh, he's one of them. One of those piece of shit liberals. I moved on to the knockout punch. My brother and I have always been close. It's impossible not to be when you're twins. We came into this world together 24 years ago, and my brother has waited very patiently till this very night. To see a vagina again. The air was sucked out of the bride's side of the room. I heard her mom say, oh my lord before the groom's half absolutely exploded in laughter. The two back tables filled with our college friends started guffawing uncontrollably, falling out of their chairs they were laughing so hard. As soon as I finished the speech a few moments later, the wedding photographer grabbed his crotch and said, dude, you've got balls. My friend Michael walked up and said, I just want you to know man, you're my fucking hero. It kinda soured any relations with my sister-in-law's family from that moment on, but hey, my point was made. I wanted to be clear about who we are as a family, and that we are proud to be part of our family, and fuck it, if you can't take a joke. So, yeah, I'm completely ostracized by her family, except her and her brother, they're cool. Family get-togethers can be awkward, when grandma won't acknowledge your existence. But hey, totally worth it. Dude, this contest hands down goes to the dude who was first in line, when the book Harry Potter and the Half-Blood Prince came out. He ran inside, flipped to the back of the book, and then ran outside to the 100s of campus screaming, Snape kills Dumbledore. There is a good ending to this story however, a soccer mom socked him right in the jaw. A lot of people on Dead More 5's Minecraft server, including Dead More 5 himself, was ages ago when he was really into the game. 
he opened it up for people and made a warp to point that people could dick around with. I stupidly wondered what would happen if I put a load of dirt blocks on the point people warped to. Turns out it made anyone warping to it fall though and die. He had just announced the open thing on his stream slash fassa book, so a shitton of people had gone in, warped and died. I didn't actually realize it would do it, and then died testing it, and of course couldn't get back to undo. He raged a bit at whatever fuck had broke it for fuck's sake I only just put it up. I was in the car with my dad driving round the car parking building, and convinced him to park at the very top of the building, about 12 stories, then challenged him to a race, he would take the elevator and I would take the stairs, whoever reached the ground floor first wins. What he didn't know, was that on every floor I was going to stop, and press the elevator button for that floor, after I reached the bottom I had to wait about 10 minutes for the elevator to get through all the floors, but when the doors opened about 7 angry men walked out, and my dad pointed at me and said him, he did it. About 100 to 120 people. I'm a high school basketball referee, and was working a boys varsity playoff game last season at a neutral site. With 12 seconds left, Timo was down 1. A shot went up from the opposite side of the court where I was, so I was looking at the two players in front of me, setting up for the rebound. The defender, Team B, pushes the team a player a good 3 to 4 feet, while the shot is in the air and ends up getting the rebound. I call the foul, which nobody sees, since they are watching the shot, and he makes both free throws to take the lead. Team B doesn't get a good shot off at the end and loses. I was booed mercilessly, and after the game was spit on as we went into the tunnel to our dressing room. And people wonder, why they can't find good youth sports officials anymore. Not me my best friend went to a Star Trek convention. He loves Star Trek, but is probably a more casual fan than a Trekkie. He entered a trivia contest, and just kept getting lucky, eventually winning. The local news was there to cover the show, and asked him if they could interview him with some of the costumed guests. He was standing proudly in front of a group of conventioners in Star Trek garb and the reporter asked him what he thought of the show so far. His answer was well, you know. I didn't really have anything to do today, so I thought I'd come down and see how everything was going. I didn't realize Klingons were such wusses, the Romulan costumes were much better. I bet it's because all those Klingons didn't want to spend the extra time on Macube or making their costumes. As soon as his sentence ended, the reporter babbled on about something else, but watching the news at home, you could see the Klingons go WTF while the Romulans puffed out their chests and looked all proud. Apparently, this started a shouting match which lead to a pretty heated altercation, with more Klingons and Romulans joining in as people started running over to see what the fuss was. It got so bad security was having problems breaking it up, local police were dispatched, and most of the convention was shut down for the day. His mom was watching the news at home and saw him in the report. So she put in a VHS tape, and caught the last one third of the interview. I saw it years ago, and he used to have a newspaper clipping of the Star Trek ride that was in the paper the next day. He tells this story to every new person he meets at a con. It's his proudest moment. Friends of mine took a trip up to Toronto for my 19th birthday. The Leafs were in the playoffs during the trip and the games created a huge draw at all the bars. A friend of mine brought his PDA which had a universal remote application on it. All of the TVS were the same brand, and connected to cable boxes. We programmed the brand and quickly hit the channel up on all the TVS to bump it off the video input right before the lease had a scoring chance. It only took 3 times before we realized, if we were found out, we were going to receive a beating from the whole bar, possibly even arrested. You don't fuck with Canadian hockey. Thousands and thousands of people on the internet. I do visual effects, and one of my first attempts was making it look like my friend was surfing on his car on a highway. I just did it for fun, but Gorka did a story on it, and it went viral. Everyone thought it was real. A lot of people were saying, what a fucking idiot my friend was, and how he was a bad influence etc. etc. Some people enjoyed it of course. The likes slash dislikes are about half and half, but it got flagged 18 plus because it was dangerous. Our local news did a story on it, tying in something that happened to some kid dying doing what my friend did. 
Good Morning America called us, and we eventually went on Inside Edition talking about it being fake. Couple of friends, and I sent out fake letters addressed to the parents of, enter student name here, to the whole junior class of our high school, two weeks before prom. The letters basically said that condoms were going to be made available at the dance because the school wanted to promote safe sex. We lived in a pretty conservative area and the school was flooded with phone calls and angry parents showing up demanding to speak to the principal. I joined the 1 million black people group on Facebook and posted a few times, just greetings, until someone told me that white people weren't allowed in the group. So I explained how the idea of the group was already borderline racist and to keep white people out was definitely so. They explained that only white people can be racist. I explained how stupid that idea was. I received death threats. Hundreds of hate PMS. Pissed off countless more people in the group, I'm sure. I was younger, it was fun. I regret nothing. Hate is gonna hate. YALO. ETC. Calgary, outside of the arena before a playoff hockey game. There was like, one beer tent, for a crowd of easily 15,000 people. I was 18, which my dad took full advantage of. Handed me a $20, and told me to go grab beers, while he sat down. Well, I'd just finished freshman year of college and I knew what to do at parties with a long beer line. I snuck up from the side, bypassed the entire line. Had a server look me right in the eyes, showed her two fingers, and had my beer in about one minute flat. I got called an asshole by at least 50 people. I was at the library during finals week typing up a final paper. In the library were five rows of 20 computers for students to work on, and each row was plugged into one outlet. Naturally, being finals week, each row was completely full. It wasn't uncommon to see students waiting on the outskirts of the computer lab to snag a computer when one student would finish a paper. It was a dog-eat-dog -dog world in the library, man. It's important to note that these computers couldn't save anything. They were crappy and outdated, so you either had a USB drive to save your work to, or had to email it to yourself. All I had to do to complete the semester was email my 20-page religion paper to my professor. After proofing it, copying slash pasting the text into the email, and sending it on its way, I pushed my chair back from the computer in a defiant celebration. Unfortunately, my right foot wrapped around the power cord that all of the computers in my row were plugged into, and pulled it out. Zap. In a single moment, 19 other students say, WTF. And look at me. I apologized, or tried to anyway. It probably sounded more like, I, um. Oh my goodness. Sorry. Then promptly booked it out of there. I honestly feel horrible, and I don't know how many students had USB drives in that row, and were actually saving their work. A lot of students probably had to rewrite their papers that day, and it was all my fault. I would have chased me down and killed me. Long text story incoming. I went to a pretty big high school, around 1500 kids. My friends and me, drunk one night, decided to create a confessions page for our school as a joke. We started off with ridiculous anonymous confessions, like I saw this one kid jerking in the teacher's desk, while a sub was there. For some reason it got really popular real fast. Around a thousand likes over two days all from high school kids and graduates. Soon it was getting so big even parents knew about it. This also meant kids were sending in confessions anonymously to us. We knew everyone's shit. We thought it was hilarious. Until one fateful night. A girl sent in a list of all the hookups of the senior class. A flow chart with almost ever senior and most juniors that they had banged. We were astonished. This was gold. We thought long and hard and came up with the perfect plan. Earlier in the day we released a picture of the hookup chart with the names blacked. So much attention was drawn to it. Another 300 likes and everyone at school talking about the famous hookup chart and no one knew who had it, or who ran the page. Complete mystery. Now we had earned so many likes the local newspaper had even written a small article about how edgy confessions on the page. We had some serious notoriety. The next night we made two posts. One saying vote yes, to see the hookup chart. One says no to seeing the hookup chart. Ever single social network blew up. Hundreds of PPL arguing about what was moral. Kids thinking they were lawyers started stating California penial code about cyberbullying. Our school was split in half arguing back and forth. 
to see it or not. Girls were tweeting their parents and crying, seeing how fucked up kids were these days. Everyone hated each other and argued. Hundreds of comments on the post were made. The page gained another 500 likes. We decided that we weren't gonna release it just in case cyberbullying and told everyone to call down and we were playing their emotions. The best part was right after all this shit with the arguing and everything and kids cussing each other out on Facebook. We posted a normal old confession like IP sitting down at school and I'm a guy. Everyone was stunned that this huge ordeal just went on and the page was back to confessions. We deleted the page soon after because we were called into the office with our local cyberbullying unit police force. We didn't actually release any info, so we weren't in actual trouble, but if we had, the school talked about it for weeks and many girls fought over how each other voted. Shit was so cash TDLR pitted our school against each other with lightweight cyber social network terrorism. Mine was about 50 people. I worked for a company that had a really nice industrial coffee maker in the break room. The people that worked there took their coffee seriously. We started work at 6am, so first break was at 8am. Every day someone would go into the break room about 10 minutes before break and start the coffee so it was ready to go when break hit. My last day of working there I went in about 30 minutes before first break and hid all the coffee. When the person went in to make it, he came back out with pale, scared look on his face and went right to his boss. They both went into the break room in a hurried fashion. When first break came they broke the news that the coffee was missing. They knew someone had taken it because they saw it that morning. People were pissed off. There were people threatening to go home for the day if they didn't get their coffee and some people sat there looking like someone had just come along and raped their pet turtle. The storm of anger brewed to such a level of hate I wasn't about to tell them it was me that did it. I just kept my mouth shut out of fear. Later that afternoon one of the guys that worked in my area told me that if he found out who hid the coffee he was going to personally do everything he could within his power to get that person fired. I never did tell them where it was and I hope some of those hateful bastards went a few days without.